first things first, before you even get into the meeting, you need to prepare for the meeting. First of all, if you have an important meeting, make sure that your sound works and mitigate any other potential technology issues because nothing ruins a meeting more and takes up more time than sitting in a meeting and someone is dabbling around with their technology that just doesn't work. So if you need to do something with the technology that you haven't done before, make sure to look it up. Like how to share the sound of a video you want to show, how to share a screen, how to send people out to breakout room or how to collaborate in this new tool that you found. Try it out before the meeting so that you don't have to sit in the meeting while you have five people staring at you to get things working. Another thing you'd need to do before your online meeting is to prepare the agenda. This is something that is usually ignored as being an important thing. Some people just send meetings invitations out to the right and to the left. But having a meeting agenda makes sure that you know what the purpose of the meeting is. It also makes sure that people can read the meeting agenda and see if they have the correct knowledge for this meeting or if they need to jump out or if they need to bring some other person in just to make sure that the right people are in the meeting and that you're talking about the right things. And also to make sure that you have the right duration for the meeting so that it doesn't take much longer or much less time than you thought it would. One of the most common problems during online meetings is that people lose focus. They lose attention and they start dabbling around with other things, start sending emails, doesn't really listen in and that means that it takes more time than it should have and people might miss important information and then you have to repeat that all over again in the meeting or some other time. So to avoid that that happens, you can do a couple of different things before the meeting. So for example, one of the best things to mitigate that people are doing other things during the meeting is to make sure that people have their camera on. And if you think that might be hard to ask for in the meeting, it could be a good thing to send that out in advance in the meeting invitation. Just like for everyone's information, I would like everyone to keep their camera on during this meeting to keep it effective. And you know, that's not such a difficult demand to, for people to live up to. So yeah, you can just go ahead and do that because people will follow that if given the opportunity. Another way to keep people's attention high in the meeting is to, in advance, plan some breaks in the meeting. So if you have like a one and a half hour meetings or longer, you really need to have a break. And it's good to state that in the beginning of the meeting so that people are aware that there will be a break because otherwise they will start checking their email or doing a bit of other things. But if, you know, but if they know they have a break, they will save that for the break. If you have shorter meetings, a way to mitigate this is that you can start five minutes later than the hour or end five minutes earlier than the hour because that way people will have time to check their emails and make those quick phone calls in those breaks between the meetings, which means that your meeting will be much more effective. So what I mean with that is that instead of booking the meeting from two to three, you book the meeting from 2.05 to 2.55. Um, and that way you get those five minute time slots that people can do their other preparation work in. The next thing you need to do in order to improve your online meetings is the first five minutes of the meeting to make sure you to have proper introductions and set up some game rules. So the first thing is that you need to have some kind of check-in or shit chat for people to get to know each other and get speaking before the meeting. So that way it's good to make some kind of check-in exercise or to make sure that everyone properly introduces themselves or just get some kind of easy chit chat going on about the weather or whatever it might be just to get people in the mood and just get that environment where people want to talk because that usually happens before the meeting if you meet face to face when you ask people oh did, was it easy to find this location how's your day been and all of that another reason why this is good is because it's really good to get everyone talking because if they talk in the beginning of the meeting it will be much easier for them to actually raise their voice later on in the meeting and a good way to do that especially if you have bigger meetings is to welcome each and every person that joins hi john how are you Hi Jessica, nice to meet you and all of that because that will make people say hi and it will also make it more plausible that they will have their cameras on during the meeting. Or you have that some kind of check-in question that everyone needs to respond to because that way they're already going with the discussion. Another thing that's very good to do in the beginning is to state the game rules. And if you want to, you can even have a PowerPoint slide stating game rules for the meeting, especially if there's some kind of 
longer workshop or something where people really need to be engaged. And some examples of rules that you could have is that everyone keeps their cameras on, how to manage questions during the meeting. So you could ask everyone to make sure to ask questions or if you don't want questions during the presentation, you can set up, if you have any questions, we have 15 minutes in the end of the meeting to answer those. Or you could also state that if you have any questions during the meeting, please use the raise your hand function. And if you're discussing sensitive topics, a good rule to set up is that everything that's said in this meeting stays in this meeting. You could also state some game rules about if people should have the microphone on or off. Or you could also state that there's no need to do print screens or whatever from the presentation because we will share the presentation afterwards. So all of those things are really, really good to, in order to keep the meetings effective and avoid, and avoid to be interrupted or whatever you want to gain from the meeting. It's good to state these rules in the beginning and you can do it either very formal with a PowerPoint slides, or you could do it very informally where you just ask people these things. Okay, so during the online meeting, one good thing to keep the meeting effective and to get the results that you want from the meeting is to have someone to take notes. So have someone take notes or maybe even record the meeting in order to remember the good insights that came from the meeting and also remember the actions that everyone discussed during the meeting. And if you don't want to have a person who does the note taking, you could also use some kind of tool like for example, Agram that can do the notes for you. One of the coolest things with Airgram that I think is that you don't have to download everything, you can do everything from your browser. So now the Airgram assistant is in the meeting. So now when I'm talking, the Airgram assistant is transcribing what I'm saying, which is absolutely amazing. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty damn good job about it. So another thing that you can do is to have a notepad here that everyone can see where you can write your notes at the same time. And what you can also do is you can add different types of things. So you can add an agenda, whatever that could be. And you can also set an approximate duration for how long that should be. So let's say that this one is five minutes and then we start playing this, it will show how much time we have for the introduction of this meeting, which is really, really cool. Something else that you can do, you can take action items as you're speaking. So you have action one, action two, and you can select who does it. And you can also set a due date for when it should be done. So it's a really effective way of getting these actions down into a list. Okay, and let's say our meeting ends now. So let's end the Teams meeting call. And what you can also do, this is when it's buffering, but you can also see the recording of the whole meeting. So here you both have the video version and the transcript, which, yeah, you just keep track of everything this way. And Airgram is SOC2 certified, which means that they are following all of the safety, availability, processing integrity, confidentiality and privacy rules of the American Institute of CPAs, which means that your data is safe and secure. If you want to check out Airgram, there's a link down in the description where you can sign up and try it out for free. Aside from making your online meetings more effective by using tools and technology, one of the most important things that you can do during your online meetings is to facilitate them. Online meetings put a higher demand on you to facilitate as the meeting organizer because it's much more easier to disappear in the crowd, to turn off the camera and not be attentive to the meeting in an online meeting than what it is when meeting face-to-face. -face. When you're meeting face-to-face, -face, it's much easier to just ask your neighbor, do you understand what they said? And then realize that none of you understood what the person said and then just ask them. In an online meeting, you can just have 10 people sitting there not understanding, but no one will raise their voice and ask. So that means it's much more important for you as a meeting facilitator to actually facilitate. So how do you do that? Well, one of the most easy ways to actually facilitate a meeting is to ask people directly for their opinions. So if you have someone that hasn't raised their voice in some time, you can ask that person directly. Okay, so Anna, what do you think about this? Carl, do you agree or do you have something else that you're thinking about? And usually if you look very closely at the cameras, you can see who agrees and who does not and who is 
whose head is up in the clouds and then ask questions specifically to that person. Another important thing that you need to do in online meetings is to be really sure about the time. And a good way to do this is to mention during the meeting how much time you have left. That will make people see that you really take that seriously and they will also have a time frame to to have in the back of their head for how long the discussions can go on. So for example, okay guys, now we have only 15 minutes left at this meeting, so let's start to wrap things up and move on to the next question. So try to always end your meetings exactly on time or a couple minutes early because that way people will respect your meetings invitations more and that way they don't have to worry that all of your meetings expands to be longer than the time slot that was available for them. If you liked the video please click the like button because that will make sure that it spreads to more people and will help grow my channel so I would be super appreciative of that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.